We're joined by UNC Asheville head coach Mike Morell, Tejon Jones, and Drew Pember. Coach. Yeah, it feels a lot better the last time I sat up here, um, this time last year. But uh, I thought it was a uh, real character response by our guys after getting down 11 0. Um, you know, I think it was the first you know, three, four minutes of the game. You know, for us, we've been in that situation before, so I think the maturity of our team um, a lot more than, than, uh, than anything else was able to, uh, to kind of get us through that little stretch there. Probably has some jitters, um, you know, as, as is, is normal. Um, and so then I thought we really settled in and were able to really fire on all cinders, cylinders to shoot 30% in the first half. But, uh, you know, I thought our guys really did a good job defensively of, of sitting down and, and uh, making things hard on them. Uh, you know, every time we play Charleston Southern, it's, um, it's, it's a battle, especially early on. And so, um, you know, I was very, very proud of our team. Um, you know, like, like uh, a good friend once said, you know, sometimes the hardest one to get is the first one. So, you know, nice to move on. And it's his first opportunity to play in the semifinals. So we're very grateful for that, too. Thank you, Coach. We'll do questions for our student athletes in the back. Specifically for you, last year was so frustrating. I mean, you had the ending and then fouling out. How satisfying was it to, to beat Charleston Southern? Yeah, it was nice. Um, like Coach said, we got off to a little rough start, probably some jitters. Um, but we settled in, we responded well. Uh, yeah. Good. Good. Hey, John, uh, Coach alluded to it. I mean, y'all played from behind so much this year and managed to come back and win. What about this team allows y'all to do that week after week? Uh, we don't really, you know, resp we respond well as a team. Uh, we stuck to the plan. Uh, Coach always said we're going to win it on the defensive end, so we really locked down and didn't let them just pop the ball around like how we did in the first, you know, four minutes of the game. So that's kind of one big reason how we come back and get some of these wins. Okay. Brian. You a big soft record for free throws attempted, free throws made. And how much of a conscious effort was there to just put foul pressure on them and constantly try to work them? Uh, Coach crucifies me all the time uh, about getting the two. That's feet. a strong word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he he's he's very adamant in me getting the two feet a lot. Um, I, I mean, my teammates, I owe, I owe it to them. They trust me to get to the line, uh, make free throws. Uh, I got, you know, they give me the ball in pretty good spots. Uh, everyone's status is the same on this team. We all love each other, all respect each other, and I'm a byproduct of a lot of awards. But it's, I mean, I can't do it without Tay and without everyone else. When we one through twenty in this program is. It's a, good, it's a good group. I would take questions for Coach as well. Back. Mike, uh, you went to the, the Atlanta tournament early in the season and did yeah. have you know, the best three-game stretch. How much has this team grown from that, and what did you learn about handling that you know, day after day after day? Honestly, Chris, I think that stuff's way overrated. Uh, I think if you put a lot of stock into it, it can be an issue. Um, it goes back to doing what you do. And, um, you know, it's what we do is kind of the, the standard for our program. So what we're going to do is we're going to go get some rest. We're going to watch the first half of this game. We're going to go to bed. Um, and then we're going to try to play 40 minutes. And luckily for us, we play the first game today. Thought that was a blessing and be able to get out on the court and, and get a little extended time. So, um, yeah, I, I just. When I was at VCU in 2015, we won four games in four days in Brooklyn. And our best player was playing on one foot. I mean, I think if you make it a big deal, then it can become a big deal. Um, so I don't, I don't know that we really learned anything other than um, let's try to win the second game, unlike we did in that particular tournament. Kind of like last Saturday in Farmville. Last Saturday was Fletcher. Today it was Tay and Doc. And, and yeah. you have very similar uh, outcomes in both those games. How valuable are these tests and how galvanizing are they? Everything in this league is galvanizing, quite frankly. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I was an assistant for Coach Ray DeBaugh in 2010-11 at Charleston Southern. And uh, now, you know, being here in my fifth year, it's my sixth year overall in the Big South. I think this is the deepest the league has been. A lot of that's due to the transfer portal and guys like Tay who are 30. Um, but um, he, doesn't, he doesn't like when I make those jokes. But um, anyway, uh, it's a very, very deep league. Um, and so it just makes every game just a, uh, just a bare knuckle brawl. But that's what this time of year is. If you think you just come in here and you're going to walk away with something easy, you're at the wrong tournament. So um, 
you know, again, very proud of these guys. I thought Saturday um, was was just a really fun experience for us, uh, just in terms of being able to go somewhere and 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 playing in a, a place that um, everyone is against you, and so you got to choose what side of that of that fight you want to be on. Coach, players, thank you. Thank you.